This video will give a simple overview of the sliding filament theory for skeletal muscle. As a quick review, muscle fibers contain many myofibrils. Myofibrils contain microfilaments. Microfilaments make up many repeating units of the same structure. This basic structure is called a sarcomere, and it is made up of several different types of protein. The sarcomere functions in muscle contraction and can be illustrated by the sliding filament theory. This is the basic structure of a resting sarcomere. Thick filaments are centrally located and colored green in the graphic. Thin filaments are colored orange in the graphic and located on each side of the thick filaments. Tied in is the thin spring-like structure colored purple. The Z line is the zigzag line that both thin filaments and tied in attach to. The length of a single sarcomere unit is from one Z line to the next. The M line is located directly in the middle of the sarcomere. Thick filaments are attached to the M line. A sarcomere is made up of several proteins that work together to achieve muscle contraction. Thick filaments are made up of myosin. Laterally to the thick filaments are thin filaments made up of actin. When muscle contraction occurs, the thin filaments will slide inward and overlap the thick filaments. Tied in connects the thick filaments to the Z-line. Tied in is very elastic and spring-like. It functions to maintain the proper alignment of filaments. The sarcomere has several areas known as a specific band type. The I band is the area that includes thin filaments only. The H band is the area that includes thick filaments only. The A band contains the entire area that thick filaments span. This includes the area in which thin filaments overlap with thick filaments. You should be able to understand how the band lengths change as a sarcomere contracts. This can be best seen when you compare illustrations of both a relaxed and contracted sarcomere. When the filaments slide together in contraction, both the I band and the H band will decrease in length. However, the A band will always remain the same length. When you examine a thin filament closely, it is composed of two strands of actin subunits in a helix. There are several active sites on the actin for myosin heads to bind to and cause sarcomere contraction. However, in a resting sarcomere, these active sites are covered by tropomyosin. Tropomyosin location is regulated by troponin. When calcium ions are present to initiate muscle contraction, they will come in and bind to troponin. Troponin will then move tropomyosin out of the way of the active sites. After this, contraction can occur through myosin heads binding to the active sites and pivoting to pull actin filaments inward toward the M line. Skeletal muscle contraction is controlled by nerves that originate from the central nervous system. A special signaling chemical called a neurotransmitter is utilized to communicate from the nerves to the muscle fibers. The specific neurotransmitter used is acetylcholine. It changes the membrane potential of the muscle fibers sarcolemma, which leads to an action potential initiating in the sarcolemma. The action potential will then continue from the sarcolemma through the T-tubules. This change causes the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium ions. Calcium ions will initiate a change in the troponin tropomyosin complex, which enables the sarcomere to contract. I hope you found this video helpful. Please feel free to subscribe for additional simple anatomy overviews.